welcome to another episode of the Mystery Children a podcast. I am Trevian. I am Steve. Hey. Hey, this is uh, episode 51. Mm-hmm. We'll be back to 50.1. <laughs> 50. Point, yeah, 50.0. No, 50, 50, yeah. We yeah, we got to wait for PJ. Yes. We'll come back to that. But in the meantime, fuck them. Let's give him a slow clap for that, <laughs> that, that new baby coming through. Hey, hey. new baby. No, it, He's I mean, baby boy. You saw pictures, right? He sent. I mean, he sent the picture and the thing. Fucking. Did you see? You hear, did you see his name? No. You, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. His name is Elesser. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. What does that even mean? I don't know. But it's like but a it, German scientist. I don't know where they got that from. Elesser, huh? But I, but, want, I wanted to text him yesterday. Please don't let that nigga go to hood school. They gonna run his ass. <laughs> Eat lesser. Hmm. Gay. <laughs> All I know is that she gave birth to a fucking toddler. Not even an infant. It's a fucking toddler. Ten pounds, three ounces. <laughs> Twenty-two inches long, which is what? Just shy of two feet long. And my dick. Too shy. Yeah, two inches <laughs> shy of your dick. <laughs> Dude, that's a big fucking baby. Who is that guy? Who is it? Some guy just knocked on the door. You knocked on the door? Yeah, he saw us though, and he was like, "All right, it's cool." <laughs> He's like, I see you. He's like, "I see you." All right, all right. You got the headphones and the other microphones too, yeah. official in there. <laughs> Plus, it's fucking hot like an oven. It's really hot. It's soon, I'm glad you just said that because I just started to sweat as soon as you said that shit. Like, yeah, holy dude. shit, it's hot as shit. The reason is. Like I said before, some fuckhead complained that he wanted the 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 Boil- the boiler uh, room on, you yeah. know, so that all the radiators all could the be. Radi- heat- man, come on, man! This is 2019 Southern California. Everybody <laughs> has a portable like heater, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like like a legit one, not just like some funky one. Yeah, yeah. And so, like I said before, this dude, he actually, I think I said this on the previous podcast, but he actually uh. Um, he's like like on record with the the city uh-huh. that he does this kind of shit and he pulls these stunts. So this fool gets thirty five grand, right? Yeah. And then he's it, it's everyone's like we think we know who it is and everyone's guessing the same dude. Yeah. And um, he's kind of a fucking douchebag, right? Like not because of the situation, just in life, you know. Yeah. So I wasn't super surprised <laughs> when this happened. Just in life. Yeah. And right. I'm like, so he he's on a hoverboard everywhere he goes. Uh-huh. And he walks his dog while he's on the hoverboard. Dude comes into the building, gets off his hoverboard, takes literally two steps, gets back on his hoverboard, hoverboards three steps forward and waits for the elevator. Mm-hmm. The elevator comes, he has to super duck his fucking head so he can get in. He gets in the he elevator. He gets in the elevator on a hoverboard? On a hoverboard. He will not get the fuck off that thing. He gets off the elevator and he's like, and he like takes off. And you should down foot- the hall. Foot sweep that shit from him, like while he's like in yeah, full just kick, full motion. Just take those fucking legs. Fuck, use your legs. Yeah, fucking take those fucking legs. I just use mine. <laughs> <laughs> there are spokes that put a stick in that shit. Yeah, he's no, a man. dickhead. So now these pipes that run through this fucking decorated, furnished West Elm basement are radiating fucking heat, heat like crazy. a goddamn iron. Yeah. Shit is crazy hot. But we have nowhere else to go. <laughs> Dude, you're you're coming in like. Crazy fucking loud. loud. Yeah. Oh, oh, well. No, no, no. Let's uh, let's turn these little nope, these little nope, knobbies. No, nope. this is just your podcast. You know what? <laughs> if I if I back off a little bit, it's better. No, no, no. You good? Just talk. I was deep throating this how's, mic. That's why. <laughs> so how's everything been, man? I mean, you know, we uh, of us three. I mean, it's been like a hard like time. I guess like kind of cohabitating and getting together lately. We've all mm-hmm. been. A little busy, more than a little busy. You got your new job, yeah. Uh, PJ spermed, spermed somebody, and now mm-hmm. he has a fucking full-grown human being full that came out of white the, kid, yeah, named Jeff. <laughs> uh, and he's taking care he of lesser, he lesser, and uh, me. Um, my my shit's steady and the same. Uh-huh. Not much has deviated out of uh, my realm, but um, I'm working on it, you know, and. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I decided that, it's going to sound really stupid, that my life is too uh, regimented, uh-huh. too easy, 
right? Because you get used to your schedule yeah, yeah, and your habits, yeah. your routines. So I'm going to try to throw a monkey wrench in that, see what happens, and uh, try to challenge myself and make shit a little harder so that I can... Uh, you got that top secret project coming. Well, top <laughs> secret, top secret. That, right? Top secret from everybody, even my wife. That's why I didn't <laughs> say plan, it. This plan. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> nah. on it. Yeah. And then uh, um, no, but working on like my, my clothing design. Uh-huh. Um, that's the thing that I'll just, you know, I'll have it for backup. But yeah, definitely going to work on some some stuff. And um, I don't see what happens, man. I, my plan, the other day I sat down and I wrote out my five-year plan. Yeah. Right? So, and uh, it's weird. Does it include Ruth? It didn't at first. <laughs> but I, I penciled her in. <laughs> I got I penciled her in. I said, I'll keep her. Uh-huh. You know. But, uh, yeah, it's so if you really sit, I was like, okay, so I tried to write the list down first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this isn't right, like, I mean, like, this isn't right, like, uh-huh. uh, the shit I'm putting down, this is like, hmm, I'm kind of bullshitting myself, right? What do you mean by it wasn't right? But it had like four Teslas, and <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it, it was too, uh, general, okay? So, um, I was trying to do a five year plan, right? And I was like, okay, here's what I need to do. I need to do my generals, mm-hmm. then I branch those into specifics. Okay. Then I branch it into how tos, you know. And then there's some areas where I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna fucking try and see what happens, right? You know what I mean? It's like, it's just whatever. So, um, but what, you start. Right? What were like the ones that you you had no idea how you were gonna reach, like? Income, a certain income. Mass multimedia company. You're like, I don't know. I'm not fucking I'll make it happen. (laughs) But, you know, one thing I've learned is the little things I've written down and forgotten about, like just stuffed in my wallet as a reminder, I'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. And I never do. Then I actually find it in my wallet. I'm like, oh, shit, I did all those things. Yeah. yeah. You know, but um, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, like big boy shit, right? Like, Uh, I want to, I tried to go from, Stuff I'm like, I can do that. Yeah. To stuff like, ooh, I'd like to do that. To stuff like, I'm like, I don't know how the fuck I, know, I would do it. it. That's cool. I did it on purpose, though, right? Uh-huh. I did it on purpose, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah. um, you start writing some things down where you're like, that could be real, and that's actually a big Where thing. do you keep this list? Do you, like, fold it up and put it in your, well, in it, your wallet? I spontaneously did it. So, like, I grabbed a piece of paper from work, mm-hmm. grabbed a pen, went into, like, a little area where no one was at mm-hmm. on my break. And I just start writing shit down. You should keep it in your wallet. I need to type it up, shrink it down, because it's on a full 8 oh, by okay. 8 by 10. <laughs> I'm like, fold that shit up. But, I, um, like, I look at that in the same way that some people, um, I mean, I know we've personally spoken about this, but not on the podcast. Is like when they yeah. say, you know, like how some um, photographers might, like, sleep with their cameras in their bed. Right. And it kind of, like, builds this symbiotic relationship of, like, oh, if it's in proximity, then yeah. it's more, like, logical or liable that I'll do something great with this thing. Yeah. You know, so sometimes like I know it's corny as shit, but as I've gotten older, things that I like want to do or want to do better um at, like sometimes I'll just write them down and I'll just fold it up and put it in my yeah. wallet. Yeah, 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 yeah. And mm-hmm. I'll just have it on me all of the time. Yeah. Until I see whatever that thing is that I'm deficient in okay. getting better. Then right. I go, okay. And then, you know, it's kind of this um like constant reminder that this thing that's on me all of the time yeah i need to um divert like as much um attention and energy toward that thing you know as possible yeah yeah and i think it's i think it's a really good idea see for me i have it in my backpack right now okay you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but um i don't you know i need to put in my wallet because like all the other stuff i've done i put in my wallet you know what i mean it's cool though man i think my birthday's coming up, and uh, oh shit, it's about to be the big, yeah, the big one. Ooh, I don't want to say it, but I mean, you can't get away from it. You can't, you know. <laughs> and it's time, right? It's yeah. time for me to let go of all. Not not like let go of the things that you're holding. Like, yeah. Not that bullshit. None mm-hmm. of that. Like, yes, yeah, so that's nice. It's fine. Cool. But all apprehension. Yeah. All fears. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, I was listening to the thing. They're like, okay, like, name out some of your fears. And I didn't know what they were. Uh I was like, wait, 
it's not money. It's uh, not failure. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Fear of the unknown. I was like, but that's everything. You know uh-huh. what I mean? I was like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? And then someone's like, <laughs> someone today was like, imagine that that if you quit everything you did because the second, third, fourth time it didn't work out. Yeah. What happens if you did that if you were a baby and you were trying to learn to walk and you fucking failed like oh, you three times? Stopped. You just Who you said never this to you. No, I was listening to a thing. Oh, okay. I was like, damn. You're like, imagine if you're a fucking baby. Speaking of Gandhi? Yeah. <laughs> now he's like, imagine if you're a, a, a toddler and mm-hmm. you decided after the fourth time that you fell down that you were never going to walk again. Yeah, that was, yeah. He's like, that's, he goes, that's ridiculous. He's like, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, that, that you know, speaking of, uh, you was speaking about like generalizing, like that, I understand what that person is saying. Yeah. That's a, a, um, a great, like, ideal it's an idealistic way of looking right. at it and i understand i mean for a toddler like there's less at stake than being a grown adult sure and saying like oh i'm gonna step out on faith you know to make this like black and lovely you yeah know? yeah black people yeah. say these type of things but okay oh i'm gonna step out on faith even if i fail you know yeah then it'll be a learning experience i think the hardest thing is for people to look at um anything that's happening in their lives as older adults yeah. through the same lens that maybe a younger person sure. would look through. You know, that's the hardest thing. And so I get what they're saying, but the hardest thing is like transferring, like having that kind of like wide eyed, bright, bushy tailed outlook on life. Right. When you're like in this box of like, dude, if I don't, you know, if I don't fucking, I don't know, take care of the family right now or have this stable income Mm -hmm. rather than saying I have this dream that's been deferred because I'm within this box and I need to just get outside of that shit and try to do whatever it is to meet those goals. Yeah. Even if it means failing a bunch of times, sometimes that in itself, just getting rid of that little thing that's going like, nah, man, like you're not a little kid anymore. You can't afford that shit. That's the hardest thing to do. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I'm not a little kid anymore, and it's not even about me anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, not because I'm like, oh, it's, you know, not about me. Yeah. It's no, like, really, like, I have a wife now, uh-huh. and uh, we're going to have some kids. Yeah. Like, holy shit, this is all laying out pretty real, you know, and I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, it's time to stop fucking around. And um, it, uh, I don't know, just some of the things is like, uh, so, exactly what you're talking about, mm-hmm. right? So, I had to relate it to something I could relate yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I said jujitsu, right? Uh-huh. I was like, yeah, after I tried to put someone in an arm bar or a triangle my fourth time ever and it didn't work, I didn't sit there and say, why, why didn't that work? Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, didn't, I don't have enough fucking reps. I don't have enough failures to figure out, ah, last time I did this, I didn't yeah. pull his arm like that. Yeah. That's why. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, Oh shit! Like if I just gave up, I would have been done with jujitsu yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. If I yeah. had just been like, ah oh, man, <sighs> fourth time ever rolling, uh-huh. got tapped. Mm-hmm. Fuck it, I quit. You know, it's like, dude, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get fucked up. That's the only way you get better. What if? What if jujitsu? What if like your success or failure in jujitsu was like directly tied to your ability to? be able to monetarily support yourself. So let's say the next time you went into your jiu-jitsu class, okay. they're like, well, Steve, we need you to fucking tap this black belt. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, okay, let's say you can't do it today. That's cool. Then you come in the next day, then you can't do it then. Yeah. And then you come in that third day, and you can't do it then. Yeah. And then they pull you into a back office, and they're like... We're noticing a little deficiency here with you tapping this black belt. So yeah. uh, probably going to give you a couple of more times, and then we might have to kick you out of the school. Okay. That's where it becomes a little bit like more like rat racy, right? Like, uh, Yes. You know what? <laughs> when you say that, I was trying to imagine the, like, okay, how would I feel uh-huh. in that situation? My mentality as you were talking about it, completely changed. I was like, well, if that happened, this is what I'd be doing. Mm -hmm. I would take my, like, whatever. I would be there all the time. Uh I'd be training hard as fuck. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't just be going in. I I get away with a lot. You know, I I train a lot. Don't get me wrong. Could I train more? 
yes, kind of, but yeah. the wife is not going to be so hype, hyped, yeah, hyped yeah. up about yeah. that, you know, so it's like, but I could, when you say that, I say, you know what, just you saying that, even fuck it, it's not even the scenario, yeah. I could be training harder, mm-hmm. even while I'm there. That's I could. not what I meant. By, no, 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 but, no, 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 but I'm just, I'm, I'm actually speaking about like the stakes and, yeah. and this is playing, obviously I'm not trying to make a um, argument for like. Don't, you know, like, don't fail and don't, right, don't, right. don't put yourself out there. Yeah. I'm just trying to kind of, like, think about... The real consequences the real, of this. Yeah. Like, how people end up, like, from birth to death having these dreams that don't get lived out because of these circumstances that yeah. kind of, like, coop them in. Yeah. You know? but, but, no, so, you know, it was weird. I should have said side note mm-hmm. as you're saying that. Yeah. I was just realizing that I could be training harder. Mm. But going back to what you were saying, yeah. that means that there really has to be a do or die mentality. Right? Like, I'm all in or yeah. I'm fuck. you're not half stepping on this shit, right? You're like, yeah. you're not halfway, like, whatever. Well, a lot of people say that. And that's cool that, um, like, with us kind of, kind of, um, like, m- comparing, contrasting these scenarios, then you find out, like, oh, well, if, like, that bit of like um what would i say that bit of like pressure yeah that bit of pressure the first thing my my natural response would be okay well if i have this much pressure then i have to match that bit of pre- pressure with the preparation yeah. yeah 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 then you know that oh shit maybe what it is is that you have you have a little bit more rope and yeah. that's allowing you to maybe be like ah I'll get to it. And it's true. And, <laughs> you, know. I, you know, the thing is, like, really thinking about that and being conscious of that, you recognize that that slack that you, mm-hmm. you're giving yourself a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah. You're like, you know, though, like, okay, perfect example uh, I've been thinking about is I could get up, instead of getting up at six, mm-hmm. I can get up at five and lift weights for an hour before mm-hmm. I go to work. Mm-hmm. I have a gym right here. I just fucking take, like, a couple flights down. Yeah. I, and a legit gym right here. Mm-hmm. And then I can go shower up and leave the same time I always do. Yeah. You know, uh, the other day I was talking to a coworker of mine and we we're talking about the time that you spend in a day. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? Hold on. I pulled up my calculator and I said, okay, what is this, this and that? Because she wanted to know what, you know, she was yeah. like, I don't know how much time it, I was like, you know what? Let's figure this shit out. Mm-hmm. Turns out I have like four and a half to five hours of free time every day. It's fucking crazy that you say that. It's crazy that you, you like have that base number or that, that just that, that number that yeah. you've come come to. I was just watching the news this morning and they were saying that most people <clears throat> speak about not having enough time in the day to uh-huh. exercise. And they say this is, they took a poll where they were saying that maybe 73% of like whoever they, the, the amount of people they polled were like, oh, I just don't have enough time. Like, yeah. I, I'm doing way too much at work and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. And then they were saying that of those 73% of people who were um, underdeveloped in terms of, like, how they approach their, their exercise regimen, yeah. they found that they had exactly four and a half to five That's hours weird. of uh, free time. Fucking crazy, yeah. Like four and a half to five hours of free time that they could be utilizing yeah. in, like, making themselves um, much more healthy or productive. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I want, and I, I, I put everything in. I put, I put quality time with the wife. Uh-huh. I put, like, my jujitsu time. I did eating, preparation, yeah. travel time. I did all that. Uh-huh. I was like, shit. I didn't know. I was like, oh, my God. I have four and a half hours yeah, yeah. to five hours worth mm-hmm. of time to get my shit done. Uh-huh. I was like, what am I doing in that time? <laughs> you know, and it's, like, one of those things where, like, 15 minutes here, five minutes there. Yeah. 10 minutes over here. It all accumulates, just mm-hmm. like with your, your money, you know? Yeah. Then we went on to say, listen, okay, so what, what's your financial goals for the for I don't know, the next four or five years, yeah. right? We were talking about this. Mm-hmm. And then we said, okay, for like her, her goal is to get uh, an investment property. Uh-huh. You know, she is starting at the very she, you know, she's starting at the very beginning, like couple couple grand. That's what, not what, impl- what ethnicity is this girl? Asian. She wanted ginger. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, because her, her, her plan is she wants to put 20% down. Okay. At least 10, 10 20% down on uh-huh. a house. Out here in California, like, 
you'd be in the worst neighborhood and that shit's close to a mill yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to figure that shit out, right? So her, her plan was like, I'm going to, I'm going to save at least a thousand dollars a month. Okay. Right? That's, that's hefty. Hefty. That's, yeah. that's a great idea. Like, it's like, you know? it's like you don't, you can still go out and do something every once in a great uh-huh. while, uh-huh. but for the most part, you're, you're buckling down and you're serious because you're doing big boy, big girl She's shit. Work, she works at your place? Yeah. They must be paying y'all a lot of money. If she's gonna pay for all of her monthly expenses and have a thousand dollars, well, she to... does. She she does freelance stuff on the side too. For oh, she okay. does like retouching, okay. okay. Uh, which is like I don't I don't know what they pay her on that. But um, so for me, I said okay, I'm a, I'm gonna save this much a month. Mm-hmm. And you seem like you can. Does she have a well? Does she have a dual income household? She she does, but um, her half isn't involved in that process yet. But she hasn't come around saying, okay. Well, then that's, it makes it infinitely easier for her to spend, I mean, to, to put that to the side then. Oh, well, no, no, no. We'll see that. Yes. But, mm-hmm. um, the thing is though, she essentially has a part-time child that she pays for. She pays half of, uh, so she, okay. What does that even mean? So her, <laughs> okay. her, 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 uh, her girlfriend or now fiance or whatever uh-huh. has a, has a little boy. Okay. He's, he's, he's six years old. Okay. They pay for his summer camps. They oh, okay. pay for his okay. health insurance. Okay. They, like, okay. the dude's costing okay. some money. But, um, and I guess the way that worked out is, like, her, her soon-to-be wife pays for a lot of the other things, mm-hmm. like, that are necessary. Yeah, but yeah. she has no leftover income after that. Yeah, yeah. So all the saving income comes from her. Okay. So it, that still helps a lot. That's per- yeah, that's yeah, great. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then for me, I said, okay, I'm going to save this much a month and I'm going to add an extra 500. And she said, oh, where are you going to get that from? I said, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to get that from. But that's what I'm, that's, that's, I'm putting it out there. You have a, you have a dual income. Do you, um, I don't know why you guys, I mean, I've told you this uh, before. Like, remember I told you, like I read Common's book and he was saying that um, his stepdad and his mom and his maternal mom. Yeah. Um, or his biological mom, I should say, they had like this great, like way of dealing with their finances. Mm-hmm. Where the father, he was like a plumber or some shit in okay. Chicago, and he made just enough. You know, as you said, that um, your friend's fiance, uh-huh. she makes just enough to kind of cover, you know, the monthly expenses for the household, and then right. she doesn't have anything left over. Right. He was the same way, where he made just enough as a plumber to cover. All of the household expenses, you know, he was able to cover the water and power, whatever, whatever that is, um, the mortgage payments, mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. that stuff. He was able to cover food, you know, yeah. all of those things. Yeah. And he didn't have anything left over. But what they did is that he entrusted Common's mother to utilize like pretty much 100 percent of her income. Yeah. For their retirement. So ah. she was taking like everything that she was receiving. She was like, OK, well, I don't have to pay off the mortgage or I don't have to pay any of the 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 monthly payments yeah. that are usually like acquired or, or come with being an adult for the most part. Right, right. But everything that I'm receiving in terms of like my um my salary, that's all going into this pot for our future. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you know, with Ruth you, with Ruth, you ever thought about Trying that, seeing like, oh, okay, well, this is how much I make. Am I able to cover our living expenses in totality? Yeah, and just have her put whatever she gets away for us. Yeah, you know, we um we we talked about sitting down and putting together a plan. Uh huh. Um, and she she's my sugar mama. Yeah. Like she makes way more than I do right now. Okay, well then let's flip that then. Yeah, you, yeah. She, yeah. she fucking covers yeah. the shit and then you put everything away right. for for the future. Yeah, it's funny you said cuz I was thinking something like that the other day cuz I'm trying to like uh, think of, you know, how we could do this, uh-huh. right? But it also comes down to what your goals are, I think. So like our, my my friend's goal, you know, a coworker, she wants to get the investment property yeah. and she said she's going to get it within the next 3 to 5 years. Uh-huh. And and that's cool. For us, I also would like an investment property. Yeah. But it depends on what Ruth's goals are. You know, like, um, she might be like, well, that's nice, but I actually want a house to be in. You yeah. know, but the, yeah. right now it's not a good buyer's market for homes. Uh-huh. Um, it's like, shit's 
really fucked up right now. So yeah. you're kind of wasting your money if you buy a home right now. Yeah. So unless it's a special circumstance. But in three to five years, they're saying when the economy kind of fluctuates a little bit, that there'll be time to jump in and start buying. I would like to buy a, um, a rental property or something mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. fix it up and then like make money off of that. Mm-hmm. But my goal is to have a couple different sources of income. Mm-hmm. You know, this might be a dry and boring conversation, but it's like, nah. it could be like rental property. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a 401k going, but uh-huh. I'm not even going to count that as a, as a stream of income. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, hopefully um, my side things that I must try to start doing, will start pulling in some income uh-huh. and kind of just go from there. But I'm really trying to... I, you know, my ultimate goal is to be, have financial freedom. Yeah. You yeah. know, and today, you know, like, uh, I was at work. And not be fucking killing yourself to get there. Right? Yeah, yeah. and not killing being, myself. No, no, yeah. yeah. Being smart about it. Mm-hmm. Setting up systems, you know, and stuff like that. But today I was at work, and I don't know why this ha- why this hit me like it did, but, like, my, my, my boss, whatever, him and I are cool. Yeah. But, like, they called me over because they were, like, um, starting to get a little busy. Yeah. I was like, all right, cool. And then um, my coworkers like kind of said something, and we laughed about it. And then uh-huh. he came around the corner. He goes, "Come on, guys!" And he kind of like clapped his hands. Let's move. Let's move faster. And I was like, uh, I never want anyone to tell me that shit again. <laughs> I, n- I don't want that at yeah. all ever again. Yeah. N- nothing ill towards him. I like the guy. No, no, I, I understand he, he was he was feeling the pressure. You know yeah. what I mean? On something else, he was like, "I'm gonna be like this." He was just doing his thing. I was like, but I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. Ever. I don't want it. Fucking. You just don't want a person to have that type of, like, dominion over you. Yeah. And, like, you, and you can't walk away and be like, fuck off. Yeah. And, you know, and it has to be also, has, and the feeling of it in me has to come from a place of not, like, fuck you. You know what I mean? It has to be of a thing of, like, but why do I have to deal with that? You know, like, I, I like, mm-hmm. I have the capabilities to not have someone tell me what to do. You ever wonder if it's a disadvantage to have, uh, how would I even put it? Like, there's an advantage to, you know, there's people in this world that they don't put up with anything. Yeah. They're, they're, like, they could just drop some shit. Even if there's, like, even if they're playing the high stakes game of life. Yeah. They, they could be like, like, as soon as the dude claps at them, like, hurry up. They're like, you know what? Fuck you, I quit. <laughs> like, there's people there in this world <laughs> yeah, yeah. who will literally be like, Oh, suck a dick. And yeah. they just walk out. And they'll get another job. And they'll figure, yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll figure, yeah. They'll figure it out. Something else. And you go, and there's, I have a, I have a lot of reverence for them. I mean, I think they're fucking wild as shit. And I yeah. think that it's sometimes you got to just like shut the fuck up for certain things. I, right. I'm learning that. Yeah. But then there's a certain cool factor that comes with a person who can look at any given like environment or situation and say, this is not working for me right now. So why the fuck would I continue yeah. having myself in this situation? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what's funny is that I was thinking, what if I was positioned right now to where... See, okay, so the guys at the... Uh, so to go back to where my thought process is, there's you know, guys at the other side of the warehouse. They're on yeah, the dock, yeah. And they move slow as fuck. Uh-huh. I don't even know how they get away with it. Like, they'll literally stand around for an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With supervisors walking around and shit, like, an hour. Yeah. Not doing shit, and no one says anything to them. Yeah. They're talking. They're doing whatever they're fucking doing. Mm-hmm. One guy, he does busy work. You know, like, he might as well be on a fucking movie set. Yeah. Being that dude that carries a pane of glass back and forth across the <laughs> set. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. He's just moving, making it look like he's doing shit. Uh-huh. And I just watch him, and I'm just like, dude, I see you. Yeah, yeah. I fucking see you. Yeah. The reason why it only concerns me, which... I don't give a fuck what they do. Dude, uh-huh. they can stay on their fucking head for eight hours. I don't give a shit. <laughs> what bothers me is when you guys fucked off for so long and now you're backed up and you're like, Steve, can you help us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I go, if they ask me to help them today, I'm going to say no. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say no to them. I'm just like, I'm not helping you guys. And you can take it up with somebody else. And if you don't like it, I don't care. And I'll give you a reason why. And I'll say, look at the cameras. They stood around for a fucking hour and you want me to come in and stop doing my job to go help you with your fucking job? I'll kick you in the balls, man, and, and say, fuck this. And I guarantee you, as soon as you do that shit, that's when the fucking, like, dude drops the plane of glass, and, and then yeah. the fucking DJ stops the regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. wait what, what did he say? Yeah, yeah. Did he say no? He said fucking no. Did he say no? It's weird, right? Yeah. I, I've been in situations, actually, I've perpetually been in situations where I look around and I go, 
the motherfuckers ain't doing shit. Yeah. And they co- and it's cool when they're not doing shit. But like, if I falter even a little bit, somebody's like, Ooh, hey. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait hey, hey, what? So, yeah. What, what, what just happened there? Yeah. I'm like, you motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I'm busting my ass. These motherfuckers ain't doing shit. Nobody, nobody care about them. Yeah. They getting paid the same amount as me. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. As soon as I fuck up, it's like, hey, you see you fucked up, right? I'm like, you know, I suck a dick. Yeah. So. <laughs> but you know, the funny thing is that went through my head too. I was like, why? How come he never goes over there and claps his hands with these dudes and say, come on, let's <laughs> go. crazy. I was like, wait a minute. So I said, okay, let's be realistic now. Like, let's just jump into like, no victim shit. Right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. yeah. Maybe he does and I don't see it. And they're like, uh-huh. maybe he's like, come on guys, I need you guys to move faster. Mm-hmm. Maybe he does do that. Yeah. I, I'm not there all the time. Yeah. But guess what? They're not moving faster. Mm-hmm. So what the fuck do you do yeah. then? So either he's not saying anything or he is and they're like, fuck you. I don't think he's saying anything, but then I, I've also realized through like, you know, having all kind of like transitional jobs and shit like yeah. that and all kind of things is that for the most part, it's kind of like, um, what's that Spider-Man shit where there's like, um, with m- great, much responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Great become, power. Become, power becomes just, responsibility. responsibility. But just to kind of like break that down into which, what you're talking about is that for the most part. When you have like superiors and then they look across like the board and they go, okay, well, this person is best for this certain thing. This right, person right. is best for this certain thing. This person is really good here. This person is really good there. Yeah. For the most part, like higher ups will usually understand that like I can go to this person, this person, and this person, and I know that whatever I give them for the most part is going to be a completed task. Right. I can entrust them with whatever you know task I give them yeah now those people who end up being their like rocks and their go-tos those people are usually like judged on a different scale than the average fucking employee right right. so the average employee is funny like they end up having this fucking freedom that that person that is is an entrusted employee yeah. doesn't have because yeah. that person that's an entrusted employee is usually always working to keep that trust intact. Yeah, always working. Okay, well, I, I've given you this and you completed this task. So, okay, what now? So now I'll give yeah. you another task, and they're always going to expect that because I see them as a more capable worker. Yeah, I expect more of them. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and meanwhile. The motherfuckers, like the the people who are just under, who 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 are coming in and clocking in and clocking out, yeah, not really doing very much. They have this like crazy ass freedom, and the weird thing that 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 most management doesn't understand is that sometimes that can be a real a really like heavy weight to bear on those people that you entrust to like complete all of these tasks. Because yeah. then they start looking down at everybody else and they go. Like, dude, you're asking me to do all of this shit all the time. Yeah. And I'm completing these things. But if I fuck up at all, it seems like you have a magnifying glass on me. But you have this whole other employee base that is just like fucking running wild and shit, having fun. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I want to fucking have fun too. you, (laughs) you, You literally wrote the script of where I work at. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong. Like where I work at, they treat everyone really well. yeah, yeah. But it is a job, mm-hmm. and uh, for me, like I, 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 it's my job to repair furniture, really expensive furniture, yeah. and make it look like perfect mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Some dude could come through with a bat, and smash the yeah. legs off of a fucking table. Guess who has to fix it? Me. I have to color match it. Yeah. I have to stain that shit. Yeah. I have to sculpt it so that if it has any intricate uh, carvings in it, uh-huh. I got to make it look just uh-huh. like it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And fucking like bondo or some sort of like epoxy or something. Yeah. Then from there, like, hey, when you're done with the table, you think you come over here and help us like unpack a hundred boxes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Steve, when you're done with those boxes, I need you to come over here and help me. Yeah. Hey, this has to get out by two. Mm-hmm. I run over there, and then oh, uh, tomorrow we're gonna go take some photos, and then we get back. Can you edit yeah. like thirty photos? Yeah, uh, you know, and make them look really nice because we're starting up a website. Do I do all that? Yeah. And and they don't even understand that they're putting that much pressure on you. Yeah. To them, it's just, we know Steve is good for it. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's what it is. We yeah. know Steve is good for it. We know whatever we give him, he's going to put his utmost, like, um, gumption into making sure that this is completed. Yeah. We know we can't give that to whatever. Whoever the to this guy yeah, yeah. or this guy, but we know we can give it to him. But what they don't realize is that 
that fucking pressure starts to amount. And you're like, dude, you, I know you don't see it because you think, like, hey, he, he's going to do it. But, dude, you just gave me fucking eight tasks to do. Yeah. And then you gave all of these other people that I'm looking at a task, and they didn't even complete that. They didn't and, complete that, And dude. you didn't say anything to them. Yeah. But if you give, if you given me eight tasks throughout the day and I'm unable to complete one, yeah. then we have to, like, talk. Yeah, and you're like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's weird because like my coworker that I work with, she's essentially gonna be my boss when this whole thing yeah. pops up. Uh-huh. She understands it, and mm-hmm. she's like, I see what's happening. Yeah, she tried to delegate it and make it like so they're basically taking advantage of me. Uh huh. So like, there's a supervisor in another department, and he keeps pulling me out to do these other things. And I'm getting fucking pissed. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to say something. Mm-hmm. Like I was going to say, if he asked me today, I'm going to tell him no. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it because mm-hmm. you guys are being fucking lazy. Mm-hmm. Like this right here has been here for hours. There's two of you guys. Yeah. I used to do this, your job. I used to do it by myself. Mm-hmm. You know, and so um, I was, I think, a decent employee when I first started there. Yeah, yeah. And at some point in time, I said, I, I don't fucking care if I do a good job here because, like, I don't really give a shit about this yeah, job yeah, or, yeah. like, it's, this isn't my career. But then I realized one day, like, especially when someone said the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Yeah. I said, dude, I started seeing, like, common traits at work and then also in things I'm trying to do in life. Yeah. Which were lackluster. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, fuck. Ah, fuck it. I'm going to mm-hmm. try to be the best employee I can be at work and see how it translates to life. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of like to say, like, if your house is a mess, that means that your, your mind's a mess. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, the thing that you're supposed to go home to, which is your sanctuary, yeah. and the shit that you're supposed to escape the world and feel good about, mm-hmm. you go home and it's not even that. Yeah. And you got shit laying everywhere. Things are fucked up. Blah, blah, blah. That means that you're dropped to a level to where you don't even care about yourself. Yeah. You know? So, like, little things like, I don't know. I just, I'm trying to be a 10 at everything, and I'm a, I am aim for 10 uh-huh. so that I can at least hit an 8. You know what I mean? Like, at work, I'm trying to be the best I can be at this. I try to knock this out when I come home. Are you, are you, I mean, is this purely for you, though? Yes, it is. Because it has to be purely for you. you yeah. You, you know what? Um, this is something that I have a problem with, and I'm, guessing you probably have a problem with it too is that um like i used to have a i think this is before you met me like steve i mean pj knows her but like i had a a girlfriend at a point and she used to like there was a a job that i had when i was with her Mm -hmm. and i just wasn't having fun right right at all it was just like a really stressful shitty job yeah and she was like why don't you quit and i was like Oh no, I don't I don't quit. Like I've never yeah. quit a job. And she was like, Well, yeah, but is is it making you happy? Like you're you're sitting here. I was like, she was like, You're you're like not happy with me right now, and I'm supposed to be a source of happiness. Yeah. And you're not happy with me and in this situation right now because yeah. of some shit that's that has nothing to do with me. Yeah. It's like you that job situation. And we're speaking about this all the time. Yeah. Like mm. and she was like, Well, if it's that crazy that it's spilling over into like relationships and life and, and like that's all you can kind of focus on because it's so unenjoyable, she's like, why don't you just fucking quit? And, yeah. and the thing that we used to have these arguments about is that she kind of was trying to get me to understand that everything in life doesn't have to be like, or everything in every situation doesn't have to be conquered, just so you can like show yourself that you can conquer it. Right. Sometimes it's okay to look at a situation and say, like, simply, is this situation making me happy? Is it bringing is it me joy? Yeah. Is it is it leading toward anything that's gonna ultimately fulfill me? And then right. you go, no. And she was saying, in some situations, it's okay to be like, well, let me go find out what's going to bring me these things that I'm looking for. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Just walk away from this shit. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, this was taught and told to me a long time ago. Yeah. And even now, it's hard. I still I still haven't been able to master that type of thing, but this goes back to what we were speaking about earlier, which is there's a lot of like um um oh, what 
there's like a lot of power in being able to just walk away from things that don't make you happy. Yeah. A lot of fucking power. Like Kanye, if you I'm pretty sure if you're having a general discussion with somebody like Kanye, yeah. and you say something he's not interested in or doesn't make him happy, he'll probably just walk away from you. He yeah. seems like a type of person yeah, who's yeah. like, nope. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what's crazy is that I mean because that's true like um, you have to then say is it bringing me joy so I've been saying so it's like saying no to people yeah, yeah, right exactly yeah, yeah. can you do this isn't that no mm-hmm. like I, people used to ask me to make custom shit for them all the time mm-hmm. and I wasn't getting what I felt like I should get from it and I don't even mean monetarily it's just like it's not bringing me joy yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and uh, I was like I just started saying no and then some people I just stopped talking to yeah and they're like oh and they send me text me i understand what i did how come you know you're not in communication anymore uh-huh. got nothing from me then either yeah, yeah i'm done like fuck that so um so what i'm trying to do now is exactly what you're saying mm-hmm. but have my lineup like have things lined yeah, up yeah. if yeah. i can start bringing income even if it's a little bit less than i'm making now mm-hmm. i will i will do it mm-hmm. i'll walk away mm-hmm. and um so i can spend more time building these other things up yeah and um yeah, man, I mean, it, you know, she's right. You got to be able to just know when to say, I'm done. Yeah. You I know? mean, and that, that's who she was. That's who she is still. You yeah, know? yeah. Like, but that's who she is in life. She's a person who, like, if something isn't, I mean, I remember her going to school for public, pu- public health. She went to school with, um, with PJ's wife. She went to school with Sarah. Ah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, she yeah. went to school with Sarah for public health. You know, I, I want to say she got her... She either got close to her master's, something. She's like, went to school for a long time to yeah. get that shit. Got in public health, was like, ah, this shit isn't for me. And just and totally switched, went back to school yeah. and decided to become like a, um, <clears throat> I think it's like a, who do people, women who deliver babies, like a doula or whatever. Yeah. Uh, she went to schooling for uh-huh. that shit. And it was like a whole additional, you know, set of, um, of like education, a whole different like educational pursuit yeah. that took her, you know, many more years, you yeah. know, or a few more years to receive her certification for what, her her um, medical certification to become that. Yeah. And now she's happy as shit. It seems like from what I've gathered, you know, I like I don't talk to her on the regular, but I'll see her through like social media, and she always seems happy as a motherfucker. It's allowed her to move to the south. And mm-hmm. she has her own house there. Okay. She makes really good fucking money. Yeah. She's yeah. always happy. And that's all she talks about is what she does and how much she enjoys what she does. It's awesome. Now, think about, I mean, how many people would do that? How many people would would spend the time and the money to receive their um their their masters yeah. in one area, get there and then go, nah, I'm good. Fuck and just yeah. and just decide not to do it. Not like well, let me just find the right situation within this industry. Yeah. She was just like not interested in the industry. I think that's, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I mean, I think it's very strong yeah. and that's what you have to do. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I struggled for a long time with, I got to do something in fashion design. Yeah. Not because, well, yes, I went to school and I spent a lot of money to learn mm-hmm. how to do this shit, but also like the attention I got from it. Like yeah. I was making moves, things were promised to me mm-hmm. and then dropped and mm-hmm. that's my fault for like, um, relying on other people yeah. I learned that lesson and I just couldn't let it go couldn't let it go couldn't let it go and then now I'm sitting back and realizing I'm like I don't I I want to design clothing but I don't want to show fucking at fashion week every like three or four times a year yeah. and I don't want to like be stressed out mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. trying to design shit and it's half assed because I don't have enough time to do it. I don't want to do any of yeah, that. I have yeah. zero, zero, zero interest. Yeah. I have interest in making cool shit, making it, people like it, they buy it, that's it. I'm interested in building businesses yeah. and helping them grow and see what I can make out of them mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. just for the challenge of mm-hmm. it. That's what I'm interested in now. Like I'm interested in being my own boss, not because like it's a sexy thing to say. I'm inter- I just... <clears throat> It's not bringing the the nine to five is not bringing me any happiness, yeah, yeah. and I can't do it. And then, you know, like to the point to where like the money happiness meter is starting to level out. Where before I was like, I can bear it because like this yeah. is the most money I ever made in my yeah. life. This is cool. I get to do cool shit. Yeah, yeah. But it's walk. It's creeping up on me, and where I'm like, is do I give a fuck now? Do yeah. I do I care? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't want you know. So I want to just have adventures. You know, mm-hmm. I want to do it 
just to see what happens. Yeah. I can always go be a basic fucking person and get a basic job. Yeah. But I want to do something before I can't anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I want to fuck it. Let's just do it. And that time is it. like, it's, time is a fucking motherfucker. That shit is quick. I mean, <clears throat> I have times where I'll look up and I'm like, dude, I'm 38. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I remember when I started my 20s. Yeah. And... I couldn't even fathom. I was like, oh, shit. Like, you have your whole life ahead of you. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be honest, I never even really thought about it like that. And that's the thing when they say, like, hindsight is twenty twenty, or they say that, um, like, youth is wasted on the young. Yeah. You know, and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. like because you realize, you're like, dude, if I had all of those, if, if I had all of that time back and I had the wisdom and understanding that I have now, and you could just yeah. go back to 20, yeah. you'd be like, dude, I'm about to fucking wreck shop. Yeah, I'm going to kill this. I'm about to kill this shit, because yeah. now I understand that that clock, that fucking hand starts to spin, bro, and it starts to spin really fast, yeah. and you can look up and go, dude, that was like 10 years. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, and, so that, fast. and that was 10 years, and I didn't really get a chance to like, there were a few things I wanted to do within that 10 years that I didn't really get a chance to do, you know, and you know, you're saying you're about to be 40. Yeah. That 50, it'll be quick, man. Fucking blink. It'll be, you'll blink. You'll be like, oh, shit, I'm yeah, fucking yeah. 50, you know? That's, and, that's... and if you're 50, it's a lot harder to do what you want to fucking do at oh, 50. Because yeah. then oh, you're yeah. like, oh, I'm locked in, man. Like, I have to. That's the thing. You know? I, I want to have kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be a present dad. Yeah. You know, I want to be, I want to be able to teach them. Uh, how to go down the right path, not force them. You know, I don't want yeah. them to do anything you want to do, but be like, look, if you want to take this here or whatever, or just help help their uh, whole XP. their whole whatever grow. You know, whatever it is that they're doing. Uh-huh. So <laughs> you see this shit? Oh, the line at Popeyes. Yeah, dude. PJ sent us a text of the fucking line at Popeyes for that new um, chicken sandwich. Oh, the 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 chicken, beyond the chicken. No, it's not a Beyond. It's just a fucking chicken it's sandwich? A, a chicken sandwich that's supposed to be so good that people do this. People are getting stabbed about it. I actually have it on... <laughs> I, saw, I heard about that. I have it on, the, on, the, on my notes as an itinerary to speak about it tonight. Trey, I'll make you a, a chicken sandwich <laughs> that's 100 times better than Popeye's. I, don't even, I promise you. I don't even eat chicken, bro, at this point. So I have no idea what it tastes like, but it must... It better taste delicious because people are... are ki- I'm not saying this. Just say it. Black people are literally killing each other over this chicken sandwich. Okay, so <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me. So check this. There's a, there's a place in Chinatown called How, Howlin' Rays, uh-huh. and for <laughs> the past two to three years, there's been a line of at least a hundred people. Yeah. Every day, and they and the dude closes the shop, uh-huh. and then he goes and opens up his like his like high higher end restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Dude, no one's getting stabbed over there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's a different type of person. Yeah. It's a different type of cultural thing. You know what I'm saying? Over there, it's going to be hipsters. No hipsters are fucking stabbing each other for yeah. a chicken sandwich. And um, that's why it's funny. It's like, it, it doesn't matter, like, ethnicity or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It matters your environment that you grew up in. If you're going to be fucking stabbing some folks or you're in a, you know what I mean? But then, you know, you know what, what else really bothers me is that kind of, um, there's an indirect perpetuation of this type of behavior on the end of Popeyes because they're going they're basically saying because there's people who are calling for them to like look you guys probably need to halt the sale of this chicken sandwich <laughs> I mean if, if people are dying if it's going that crazy like maybe maybe we need to just say like you're out and maybe it'll come back at some point but if if this chicken sandwich is so alluring <laughs> that it's causing black people to stab them, stab stab each other, then you guys should stop. And they're kind of and their their reps are saying like, no, we're gonna continue to sell this chicken sandwich. However, they deal with it, and the line is however they deal with it's it. It's Darwinism, you know. It's like it's I get it, cause you, like, but you gotta save people from themselves, man. Like, look, it's like you said, if we're if they're in an environment in a culture yeah. that that like. It's fucked up, but there's a lot of like hand clapping for negativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of hand clapping for violence yeah, and shit like yeah. that. It's not looked down upon, you know? It's kind of like, oh shit, he 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 knocked that nigga out. You know, yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. I'm saying if you know that's happening and something that you're selling, an item that you're selling or that's attached to your company, 
is only like playing as the fucking wick yeah. for this bomb. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're like, dude, you have a responsibility to maybe back up a little bit and go like, look, we don't we don't want you guys killing each other over this shit that we're selling. It's not really that big of a deal. So if if we can stop you guys from stabbing each other, we'll just stop selling this shit. Yeah. But then also, as you said, the the largely the onus should be on the people who are purchasing this item to say like, dude, we're fucking grown ass adults. Yeah. And we shouldn't allow ourselves to devolve into anarchy over a fucking chicken sandwich. I mean, I, you know, the funny thing is I almost guarantee I could tell you why people are getting stabbed, right? Line cutters. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. In my mind, I see me stabbing the line mm-hmm. cutters. I'm like, I'll fucking stab that dude. You know what I mean? I'll for sure say something. Be like, hey man, like, th- you're going to cut in front of all these people? Yeah. I'm not going to be like, you won't fight? You won't do this? I'll be like, hey man, look, all these people back here, you're just going to, you're going to step right in front, you know what I mean? Um, I saw See, even that dude. There, there's like when motherfuckers go get like Jordans. Yeah, there's a lot of dudes who used to get fucked up for Jordans. And, yeah, and how do they solve that? It's like okay, you have a fucking number now. Yeah, you can't yeah. just cut in front of line. Like I call the number, the number, and now I hand you your bag of chicken sandwiches. That's and then perfect. Yeah, and then you walk the fuck off. Now, now look, I mean. Obviously, even in that situation, a dude could just wait for you to grab the fucking bag and, and snatch then, like, it. snuff you. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> like, but Halloween it, style. It, at least it's a it's a lot more like organized than going. All of you fucking motherfuckers just line up. And it's then, true. And you're then, right. And then whatever happens happens. happens. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. That see, it, it's sad that we actually have to have a system in place yeah. so that people don't do that shit. I saw a funny video the other day online, um, and there's a huge line at Walmart <laughs> for some reason. And this guy pulls out his phone, and he's like, look at this fucking guy. He's trying to cut all these people. And it is a line, dude. Yeah. It is not even like, mm, let's give me a 15-minute wait. Dude, yeah. you're going to And then he's like, hey. He's like, hey, man. He's like, look, look at all these people back here. They're all in line, too. And he's like, I just want to buy this shirt and then this drink and this uh-huh. night. He's like, well, get in line. He's like, and then the guy just kind of ignored him. Mm-hmm. He's kind of looking, how can, how can I slip in your head? And the guy goes, hey. He goes, hey, man, did you did you remember to pick up some bandages, too? Mm-hmm. He's like, what? Because if you fucking cut that line, I'm going to beat you. And they're going to have to wrap <laughs> you up in those. And then he's like, oh, fuck. And then like he went to the end of the line and people were all clapping and shit. But that's a different. But, no. Uh, but no, no, no. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It wasn't in the hood. Mm-hmm. You do that in the hood, you're gonna get fucking jumped, yeah. you're gonna get stabbed, well, not, something's I mean, gonna happen. Somebody's gonna, someone's gonna some, step some, up. Someone's gonna up the ante. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. Really? Yeah, you're gonna do it. And then it turns into something. Yeah. But it's, it's very sad that that has to be done. Like, just think about it. The guy wasn't gonna listen to that dude until he, he received the threats of violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he's like, oh, all right. Why the fuck are we wired in that way? Like, it's almost like... Primal. It's like primal you, shit. It's like you have to press the line. Like, yeah. To, for me, I've been... I've never been wired in that way. Yeah. But I, I think more people, especially... And this is not just black people. I think, like, people of color in general who grow up in, like, centralized, like, um, I don't know, more urban areas and yeah. shit like that, they need to learn... Like, it's okay sometimes just be like... Whatever. Whatever, Whatever, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, is this worth what it's about to turn out to be? You know? That's the zen of it, man. And when you get to that point, it's it's sweet, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's... uh... So here's the thing. Like, my guess is, like, because taking the bus, and you're going to learn this very quickly. Yeah. um, That the certain areas that you go into, there's, there's a violent rush for the fucking door. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and you're like what the fuck is going on you, you, dude they act like some so many Armenian women dude. <laughs> so many old Armenian women just beating the shit out but, of each other dude it, they get on the bus like as if one it's gonna leave and just take off and everyone's gonna be dragging by the door mm-hmm. and then there's gonna be too, sorry too late yeah or I mean they get on the bus like there's a dude out there with a hatchet chasing people dude it's fucking bizarre so it's like a fucking uh, it's like Black Friday sale getting on the bus and the, the pushiest people... And emphasis on black. No, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and the pushiest individuals you'll see are older... Well, okay, in my opinion. Uh-huh. Or not my opinion, my experience. Are you going to say old Asians? Old Asians and old Hispanic women. 
Oh, yeah. Older Hispanic women don't give a fuck. Dude, they'll push. One lady almost fucking pushed me off the curb. <laughs> Dude, I literally put my toes over the curb so she couldn't get in front of me. Yeah. This fucking broad pushed me. I was like, yo, yo, I had to push her back. I'm like, you need to fucking realize. I'll let you on because you're an old lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, she, like, got down by my belt buckle and, like, shimmied her snake her way up in front of me, dude. I was like, yo, like, this is not... My belt buckle... You my dick, too? Just suck <laughs> it. <laughs> my, my... In front of my pants are touching the back of your pants tight. That's, wow. I'm like, this is fucking weird. You don't think that's strange? You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Other thing that pisses me off is when you're on the train and you're standing in the door. Uh-huh. They'll do it there, too. And they'll get dead in front of you, and you're like, there's no fucking way this bra can get in front of me. There's no uh-huh. fucking way. Uh-huh. Dude, they get in front of you still. I'm like, how? My, my toes are touching the door. <laughs> how did this happen? And you know what they do? The doors open up, and everyone goes to rush off, uh-huh. and they walk slow as fuck. And they're trying to get up the stairs. They're uh-huh. like, Ugh. I'm like, at that point, you might as well just get off last. Yeah. Because everyone's passing you up. And, but going back to my point is that I think it's a, um, a mentality – of your upbringing, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and your environment, meaning that you always have to fight for what you want. Ah, uh, okay. okay. You know, no one's going to give it to me. I have to take it. That's, that makes total sense. And it's like, holy shit. I, I get frustrated, but what am I going to do? Fucking thump an old lady? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm fucking no, in the back of the head. Sense. I mean, just because, like, you encapsulated it. I mean, I, I didn't say this because, you know, obviously I was trying to make it, like, as... Eminem as possible, like, hey, don't kill each other. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. But <clears throat> when it comes down to it, I don't think or over a chicken sandwich. But it's like it's not really about this chicken sandwich. What it's about is like that pressing of the line in respect. Yeah. And you know, like that's a huge thing. <clears throat> they speak about that a lot. I mean, I, I've been in like orientations um, with certain jobs where they speak directly about like the relationship that people in a certain area have with the word respect. Yeah. And it's a real thing where you go, there mm-hmm. are certain areas where like, as soon as you kind of like fuck with the boundary of like respect, yeah, that's when things go fucking off the rails. So that's when they go fucking like ape shit. You go, okay, look, as soon as these people in this area feel disrespected, yeah. like anything that you do, it's going to be a problem. Right. So let's yeah. see, like an example would be, let's say in a, a higher income, but just yeah. make it general, a thing of what would be like disrespectful to them. Uh, maybe the way a waitress would talk to them. Yeah. 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 I'm mad now. Uh-huh. Get me your manager. Blah, blah, blah. That's right? how they would deal with it. So now yeah. here's, here, here it is in the hood. You just got yourself brand new Nikes, right? They're mm-hmm. white. Someone actually steps on them, but doesn't say, fuck, dude, I'm so sorry. Or they yeah. sweep the top of your feet while they're sweeping. Mm-hmm. There's a fight happening. Yeah, Not let me talk yeah, to your yeah, manager. Yeah, it's no, like, no, bitch, no, you no, fucking no, stepped no. on my yeah, shoes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, no. like, it's crazy. And uh, so knowing that, mm-hmm. one time when I was getting on the bus, a dude stepped on the back of my heel three times getting on the bus. Yeah, yeah. I was like, three times is purposeful, man. So I turn around and I fucking put, I was like, hey, man, what the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. I go, I go, don't fuck around. I go, don't fucking step on my shoes anymore. Yeah, yeah. He just kind of like smirked. I was like, I'm not fucking playing with you, man, mm-hmm. like at all. Yeah. I was like, you're being mad disrespectful. I don't fucking care. But, you know, I was like mm-hmm. pissed at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to get to work, man. Yeah. I don't fucking care. It isn't even about my shoes. My yeah. shoes were fucking garbage because I'm going to work. Yeah, yeah. It's about what you're trying to say, mm-hmm. you know. And then, um, and he's like smirking or whatever. And I'm like, cool. I'm not trying to fucking throw it down right now. Yeah. I just want to go to work. So I went and sat down. Didn't even look at the dude after yeah. that. Fucking nothing. But I'm not going to let you oh, take my wallet out of my pocket, open it up, pull a 20 out. And then maybe you'll give me a while back and then me not say, you know what I mean? It's like just the and same the, thing. And the funny man. thing is I think maybe that would it, that's what it is at its core. Like the, the, the chicken sandwich is just this, it's just a like, fuck, I don't say, it's just a thing. It's just like a inanimate object that is like pro- showing as like exemplifying how thing how the order of things yeah. in urban areas, yeah, and like yeah, yeah. how things work. Right. So this is like this thing that's like sitting on this pedestal. Like, hey, everybody, right? Get this. This is worth whatever it is. You know, right. how, however it's being marketed. And then that thing is just like sitting there. And I'm like, hey, man. Well, I want that thing because it's being um, marketed as when you get this, you become. 
perceived value. Perceived value, exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's what I was trying to get to. So it has this perceived value. Yeah. But that thing really isn't like, it's not telling motherfuckers to stab motherfuckers or anything. No, no, no. It's just like these basic like ideologies that are at play. And then that thing just happens to fall within the realm of like spurring some of these like ideologies that are already in, in play. The which, only way which, people know how to deal with, depending on your perspective, your, your perception, excuse me, your perception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, the, the sense of urgency that I might not get mine. Yeah. That someone else is going to take mine. And don't get me wrong, there's times where I feel that mm-hmm. and I have to be like, well, what's really happening? Though? Yeah. I'm like, nothing. That's not real. But it's because of how we were raised. Like we yeah. have, and that, that's the thing is that me and you have those same sensibilities yeah. as these people who are stabbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just we're lucky enough to have gone through things in our lives that have allowed us to like reason with those sensibilities. Yeah. To really like step back and go, yeah, man, like I know you might want to punch this dude because he cut in line. Or I know you might want to fucking really amp up on this guy, but, you know, I mean, especially in your case, you're like, well, Ruth's with me. Yeah. Is this something, is it worth it? You right, know? right, right. Now, for you in that situation, you might go, look, I'm not going to amp up on this dude the same way I would as if I didn't have my wife with me or I didn't have right. things that I could possibly lose in this right, life. Right, exactly, yeah. But... We're gonna we're we're gonna draw a line where it's like, look, just don't fucking touch me and don't go too crazy. Yeah. Then we're good. Yeah, yeah. You know. But a lot of people a lot of these people are probably like stabbing motherfuckers and don't give a fuck. They don't really have too much to care about. Yeah. And not only do they not have too much to care about, because maybe they do, maybe they do have children and things that they can possibly lose by engaging in these violent activities over a fucking chicken sandwich. Yeah. But Somewhere along the line, they they weren't given enough tools to reason with how they operate. Like yeah. I think that's an amazing thing for any human being to have. To go, why am I thinking like this? Yeah. Or like, yeah, yeah. Why would I even want to do X, Y, and Z? Yeah, exactly. A lot of people. You'd be surprised at how many people don't have the ability to ask themselves that question. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny with this. Uh, self-evaluation thing I have things that I do and I don't know why I do mm-hmm. them and I say well why am I really doing this yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that anymore I it, let's say it is it's a habit the, yeah. the automatically go there in that thought process mm-hmm. I'm gonna break that and how hard it is to break those yeah, habits yeah, yeah. right those conditioning mm-hmm. things that happen so then if I put those same if I put the same thought process on these people and people are like what's wrong with you why are you just stabbing people yeah, you know yeah, but yeah. They go to a dark place in their mind, and then they feel betrayed. They feel anger. But then from there, they, like you said, they haven't been given the tools on how to constructively uh, calm themselves down or, like, figure out what's happening in yeah, a certain yeah. way. They, yeah. It's emotional reaction, yeah. right? It's not like a, a logical thing. They're not a, a serial killer waiting and stalking prey and waiting for that one moment to get them. They're just reacting, right? Yeah, that, but exactly. Like yeah. you said, it's just a reaction to whatever. Yeah. And that's common especially me growing up that's common in the hood that's yeah. common is that it's just a reaction yeah there's never a questioning of the reaction yeah and i think for everything that it's something and, and i talk about this all the time even when i'm amongst like people outside of like you and pj or sometimes i'll look around and i go that dude's wearing the exact same clothes as this dude and this dude's wearing the exact same clothes as the dude next to him. Right. And the four dudes that are over there dress exactly the same. Yeah. They think exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're attracted to the same type of girl. Right. They fucking, like, their reactions to the, to the stimulus in the environment are exactly the same. Yeah. And they probably will never go through their lives and go, why the fuck do I look like all these niggas I hang out with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why do I think like them? Why am I into the same shit that they they into? Yeah. If the same things that will make them punch a dude in the face are the same thing that is the same thing that'll make me punch a dude in the face. Yeah. Why the fuck is it like? Why am I fine with being like this homogenous thing? Yeah. And I'm saying, and and I'm not I'm not trying to like make myself 
above them. Or no, 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 no. I totally Perception. Have it, I'm t- I totally have it figured yeah. out. What I'm saying is that I respect the fact that I have the ability to go, why the fuck am I doing whatever I'm doing? Or why am I taking this path? And I think more people, and I'm going to say especially black people, that's just because I'm speaking from a black sure. perspective, not because we're the only ones no, no, no. Who, who need the ability to like look at themselves right. in a broader... Th- Everybody should do it. They, sure. the, the human race in general should have a little bit more introspection. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, it's just a, a weird thing to me. And, and, and not even like the chicken... Okay, let's, like, let's set the chicken sandwich thing aside sure. from the beginning. <laughs> we, like, you're talking about like, gang violence and yeah. shit like that. How many dudes before they shoot a fucking like, rival gang member go, like, this dude I'm about to shoot, like, he might have kids. We know he has a mom. Right. Might have a father. For sure. Probably got sisters. Got a whole family of people, you know, cousins, aunts, uncle. Whole fucking, like, lineage of people that, like, once I pull this trigger and take him out of existence, it's going to, like, reverberate to them. It is. They're going to be fucked up. Never think about they that They're not going to feel good. Now, if they did think about that, maybe they still shoot him. But they shoot him knowing that, like, it's fucked up. And most of them don't feel that way. They just go, hey, man, like, I had to put in work. Yeah. And it was what it was. And it was a reaction. He was going to kill me. Yeah, yeah. But if, if that forethought was, like, there before this action or this reaction, it might stop people from going, like, yeah, dude, I mean, like, is this shit really, like, worth it? Do I want to fucking take this guy out of existence and not only hurt this dude that I'm staring at, all the fucking lineage of people that are behind this guy that I've never seen before that I personally don't have a beef with. I don't know them. They haven't done anything wrong to me, but because of this action that I'm about to like perpetuate or put into, into the world, they'll be hurt. Yeah. 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 And you know, it's funny. Someone, I heard someone say, uh, talk, kind of talk about that sort of thing, but yes, it ripples backwards, but also (laughs) ripples forward. So you, you didn't just murder that guy. You murdered, all his potential, all his potentials, yeah. all of his sons, all of his daughters, yeah. all the great grandkids. Mm-hmm. All you killed, all that. Yeah, you killed all of that. You, it, it's, it, to get to, uh, I don't know, a, a higher thought process, whatever it may be. One, um, you have to have the people around you, like you said, yeah. right? So yeah. I'm dressing like all these fucking guys. We like all the same girl. Mm-hmm. That that comes up to where it's like you are the sum total of the people you hang out with, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. like if you're around people that are like I'm pushing myself to go hard to make things happen yeah. for myself, you're gonna be like, oh shit, you rise to that level. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to, right? That's why I say also like I gave myself unreasonable. I don't want to say it like that. I gave myself expectations that are crazy. Yeah, 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 like, crazy. But why not? No one's stopping me from writing that down. And what exactly. harm is it? You know. Yeah. But you know the thing is, it's like. One, let's say you do have someone's reasonable. Mm-hmm. They have nobody around to, to, to show them the right way. They'll, yeah. you know, eventually they'll get there and they'll seek it out. Uh-huh. But also, for the most part, a lot, a lot, I can say a lot of dudes from the hood or just certain neighborhoods or whatever, they, the, the ego gets in the way. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I don't fucking fuck that. I don't need to hear that. And you'll see this in certain in neighborhoods of where, like, alpha is the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to, like, Beverly Hills, no one... I mean, Alpha is a different thing. Alpha yeah. is the dude that's got the Bentley and owns exactly. and owns that spot. Mm-hmm. And like that guy's fucking pulling in weight. Like that dude's like making moves and he's making money. You know what makes me pissed off is that, you know, you brought up this idea. I thought about it before. Is that in the hood, dudes are like you said they're trying to be Alpha. Yeah, and everything is like this, like um, very ground level kind of hand to hand. Like, oh, well, I'm Alpha because I can really fucking like beat this dude up or beat this dude up or beat that dude up. And like you said, then you remove yourself and you go to these more like um, wealthy areas. Yeah. And those alphas, like they basically, they like rubbing their hands thinking about the dude in the hood who's trying to be, oh yeah, cool. Another another motherfucker in the prison system. Right. I'm invested in the prison system. Yeah. I'm in the prison industrial system. More money, dog. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Get in trouble, nigga. (laughs) Yeah. And that, that bothers the fuck out of me because it's like you guys don't even realize that you're trying to be so fucking hard and heavy in this arena 
and it's only making motherfuckers richer. You can look, <laughs> you kind of look at it like they're sitting down watching this uh, board game and letting this board game play out, mm-hmm. and, like Monopoly, and see when they're going to get paid out. Now, obviously, it's not everybody. Yeah. But here's the thing: the traits that are being shown in like these areas of like from the hood mm-hmm. resemble more traits of animalistic behavior. Yeah. yeah. And so you want to ask yourself, why do they look down on us? You know, it's, well, because you guys are mm-hmm. fucking savages. Well, you you present yourselves, not you are. But not you are, exactly. Definitely, you, yeah, it's definitely presenting yourself. Presenting yourself as, in, as in, such. In, in that way. And the fucked up thing is that there's no difference and there's no inherent difference in like, you know, when you say you present yourself like a savage, but there's no inherent difference in the average cat from the hood versus the average cat, I don't know, in Palisades. You're right, sense. exactly. Right. There's no fucking difference. The right. only difference are the environment and the circumstances. And not only the environment and the circumstances, but like the the um, the, the molding and shaping. You right, Because you, yeah. you, you spoke about, I mean, like, the kid in Palisades obviously has the ability to fuck up numerous amounts of time. Right. And people will be like, ah, but they'll eventually get it. Because yeah. the, the, the molding and shaping or like the, the, um, what, the, the, the line that they come from at, at a certain point is going to teach them the right way. Yeah. Like, look, you, right. you're going to get the right tools that you need to make money and to be successful because you come from success. On the opposite end, when you have somebody who's only taught, like, hey, man, like, get money, fuck these bitches. Right. You know, like, it's all about everything exterior. You know, you don't, you, you probably have, uh, uh, like, lower quality of health, lower quality of um, 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 education, all that shit. So, like, there's nothing saying, like, dude, there's so much outside of what's going on here that you need to be focused on. It's just like this bubble, and on, the only things that are like applauded in this bubble, that's all you should be fucking worried about. Yeah. And they don't realize that, like, that bubble is a created bubble. I mean, I know it's on some weird, like, the white man and and like that I don't feel that way like right, I don't, right, I, right. I'm, I'm not walking around talking about the white man no. and all this. but there is a system of like well look if they're gonna be stupid in the urban areas and they don't know like what they should be focusing on outside of the shit that they're focused on we're not gonna help them like nobody's like making this large concerted effort to help us right, nobody's right. like well look they're fucking not thriving in those areas. It's making them act animalistic. It's making them act savage. We need to, at all costs, make sure that, that, that that's not happening. Right. I mean, the world is more than fine with anybody failing. And yeah. that's what's fucked up. Like, not just black people in general. Yeah. The world is fine with you failing. Yeah. If you fail, it'll be like, no. shrug shoulders. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Keep moving. Yeah. You know, it's funny because uh, as you're saying that, it's like, the kid from the Palisades, mm-hmm. at some point, they say, okay, you need to be doing that. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. and that, blah, blah, blah. Now, don't get me wrong. Lower income, higher income, there's shitty parents in higher income. Yeah, there's yeah. really yeah. amazing parents and lower income, vice versa. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not everybody. Just the the general of, like, the, the, the culture that we're talking about. But about, if you have a wealthy, shitty parent, it's way better. It's true. Than having a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a poor, shitty parent. No, it's true. Because I was going to say, um, even if that's the case... Let's say that um, now you you grew up in the hood and dad's not there. Yeah. Right? Um, mom's working four or five jobs. Yeah. Right? Or she's fucking got or substance. She cracked. Or she's, or she's cracked, cracked out. out. Yeah, yeah. Right? So now you, it's up to you to now, you're going to learn from your environment. Right? So you're learning from dudes out and about in the streets mm-hmm. who learn from other dudes out in the streets or learned on their own. So you're essentially talking about, and this is for lack of a better... Um, Whatever term, yeah, yeah. term. It's a, one infant trying to tell another infant how to yeah. succeed in yeah. life, yeah. because they don't have that knowledge. And don't get me wrong, there's dudes in the hood that are fucking Yale level dudes, like bunch of them. You know what I mean? Like they, they and a lot of them, they use it for good. They get out, or they use it for bad, and they become like a dealer, and they become a very wealthy and, dealer. And that's the fucked up is that a lot of them, you said like. Yale level, but they'll never see Yale. Yeah. And that's sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the great thing about today, in the, today's world, is that 
everything's open to anyone who's willing to work for it. Yeah. It's more true than ever before. Mm-hmm. You know, like with the internet and yeah. opportunities coming up, like you could be in a third world country if you work that shit right and it's going to take a little bit longer, you have to be a little more crafty yeah. because you don't have the advantages of others. Yeah. You'll get there. Uh-huh. You'll get there. You just have to be willing to kill yourself for yeah, it. Yeah. And that's fine. That's better than feeling that cloud all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but um, yeah, you can't have ignorance teaching ignorance because yeah. that's, you're just going to birth more ignorance, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, and hopefully if someone does come and says, look, you don't have to be like this, that the whatever it may be hasn't taken over so much so yeah. that they're not willing to listen. Well, because you got you to gotta think about like even... Like in the urban areas, anytime you have one of your like talented best and brightest that's right. able to transcend whatever um, disadvantageous like situation they've been in and then become wildly successful. Right. It's usually always somebody who either has one foot out or both feet out of that environment. Yeah. Who takes that person under their wing and they go and they go, look, like I've seen the fucking totality of like um like information yeah. that is outside of this bubble that yeah, you've yeah. been in and here it is. Yeah. These are some things that you might not have been exposed to. And so here you go, I'm exposing you to this and whatever you do with this knowledge that I'm imparting on you is whatever you do with it. Yeah. And the person goes, Oh holy shit, like I wasn't raised giving a fuck about any of this stuff that yeah. you're telling me right now right. but now I understand and now I can like utilize this information yeah. to my benefit it's usually like just like um, what would be the word it's just like it exposing the youth in these areas to something other than like the shit that is, t- that is always 24 7 yeah. being pumped in the area which is a lot of shit that doesn't mean anything you know yeah. and there has to be some like reason why there would be allowed to like oh well yeah like all of the fuck I mean think about rap music at this point yeah. I mean there was a point in I think in every generation of rap music people were like oh this shit don't mean anything but think about it think about rap music in the 80s and 90s as compared to now and yeah. you go even in the 80s and 90s people were saying this don't mean anything like it's just perpetuating they're just talking about bitches and hoes and all that right, stuff right. but even in that stuff if I look at I think we talked about this before you look at NWA and you compare that with the Migos Yeesh, you go you go when NWA came out you probably couldn't tell any old person that there was some bit of like intellect Right. And what these guys were saying. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. like, they're not saying fucking anything. Yeah, yeah. But if you compare them motherfuckers to what the Migos are saying now, this is no reason. The Migos has a lot of shit that I like. Yeah. But you go, it's different. Who's, they're saying something. Yeah. In comparison to the Migos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they actually have a yeah, point yeah. of view in this world. Yeah. Now, the reason that I'm saying this is that if, if the Migos are, are now, Okay, in the same way that people might have idolized NWA. Yeah. And they might have said, okay, now those guys at least had a chance. People who idolize NWA fans that idolize them might have become inadvertent civil rights right, like, right, activists. Right, right. Like, oh shit, you know, you have yeah. this fucking police brutality and you have these all of these things that these guys are, are speaking about. They're speaking about, you know, even in small doses about like like I said, transcending your environment and actually seeing that there's things on the other side of what you've been exposed to yeah. that may benefit you in this world. Yeah. But you strip all of that shit away when you have somebody like the Migos, everything is exterior. Everything yeah. Everything yeah, yeah, is about yeah. like, how do you look? Yeah. How do people, you know, do people value how you look? Right. If they don't, then make sure you make them value. You know, women become... Um, Objects, right. you know, uh, it's all it's all just about the like coveting of whatever objects you have in this world. Yeah, how does a young dude growing up with that type of music? You know, you got drug drug culture music. Where, yeah, you know, they said that the the rapper has used to be the drug seller. Yeah, now he's the drug, drug user. user. <laughs> so it's like yeah. when you when you come up with that being your soul kind of idea for how you should navigate throughout this world. Yeah. 
how the fuck if if you if you have that and you don't have the level of education you need and you don't have anybody telling you that there's more to life than just that yeah how do you even have a chance to do anything larger yeah <laughs> you, you know? know what it's going to take its finest right the people who can think themselves out of a fucking paper bag right like mm-hmm. it's funny cuz like rock uh, or I'm sorry rap today seems to be going through its rock and roll phase you know what that's I'm saying? That's fair. That's definitely, that's definitely right. Yeah, you know, it's like, you're like, oh, this is getting... This they fucking, are the rock stars. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's just getting weird. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, when, like, little Uzi, like, mm-hmm. I just hate on that dude. Like, you know, like, nah. I mean, I didn't... <laughs> I was talking yeah. shit about dude. I just wouldn't give, give his uh, music any play, yeah. you know? I'm like, yeah. ah, whatever. And I saw a video one time. He's, he's walking by this dude, and this dude's like, he's like, hey, hey, Uzi, Uzi. He's like, hey, pay for my college. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this fucking dude's retarded, right? Yeah. Excuse me. Like, dude's silly. You know what I mean? Like, it's pay- and it was just, he just goes, what? He goes, pay for my college. He goes, all right, give me your ball. How much is your, how much? He's like, it's like, it's a hundred grand. Uh-huh. He goes, hundred grand? Okay, Ball Ball's going to take your information down. I want you to send me your transcripts. I want to see all this and uh-huh. that. And you got to keep this sort of GPA yeah. or whatever. You got to keep mm-hmm. this, like, these sort of grades. Mm-hmm. I'll pay for your college. And then he just walked away. I was like, dude, that's cool as shit. If, that's how that dude actually is. He's doing that. Some people are like that. I mean, I don't, dude, I don't know very crazy. much about Uzi Vert. I know um, Nicki Minaj has done it. But Nicki Minaj, she did that at a particular time where she needed some like, Publicity. positive media. Yeah, but this dude, you didn't hear about it from anybody. No, no, you, didn't hear anything, you know what I'm saying? And, and, so that, that's fucking dope. And, and I, I've, that's not the only case where I've heard of one of the rappers doing that. Yeah, yeah. So now... That's cool because, you know, if we're speaking about what I just said in terms of them having positive role models. Yeah. Then that will be like the flip side, you yeah. know, where you have these dudes who may not be putting art out into the world that may be like directly influential. Right. Or positively influential. But their actions on the flip side are like pious and honest yeah and so they're still making some positive impact right the thing is how many college tuitions can you pay for <laughs> yeah. you know right right so it, it, it like you have to also not not just paying those college tuitions for people but also making sure that your art isn't just um concerned with vanity right Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, you know it's fueling insecurities, yeah, yeah, yeah. blah blah blah, all this adult shit that we're yeah. saying that when we were like sixteen, we're like shut up, you know. But yeah. when you've been in the lessons of life for a while, and you're like, ah, yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. You're like, huh? Now I'm on this side staring. I'm like, that's ooh, yeah. yeah. That's like yeah. so much damage is being done. Mm-hmm. It's it's mm-hmm. crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, though, there's also self accountability. You know, yeah, you, you got to be accountable for the, the shit that you do, you know, and you're going to fuck up in life. You're going to do stupid things. Yeah. But like, are you moving up or are you just moving forward? Like, what do you, like, what are you doing with your life? Okay. Like I was, I listened to all that shit. Yeah. But I think we're, we're all people underestimate the idea of being, um, like of teaching, of being taught. We're all being taught all the time. Yeah. And you know, they say like, People aren't like. Remember when we were in art school and they and they would ask you like, "Well, why did you make this choice or something?" You'd be like, oh, "I don't know." Yeah. And they'd be like, "Well, that's not valid because right. you're not creating art within a void right. where you're just like, oh, I just did this because.' Like all of it's coming, all of it's the result of like this compiling of ideals and experiences that yeah. you've gone through in your life and then they come out in a certain way and you may not necessarily know but if you dig deep enough you go like oh well I was taught along the way that you know whatever this aesthetically looks right. more pleasing to yeah. me or you know this may be a direct reflection of an event that I went through everybody is being fucking taught and people for for some reason think that it's natural for people to just be born good or nice or right. or with the understanding or you know the way like oh I, i've just navigated my way throughout this life you know just i i knew what to do yeah. nobody knows what to do right, right. everybody is being taught in some form or fashion how to navigate this world either correctly 
or incorrectly. Yeah. You know, I just, I would love for human beings in general to like not just take that with a grain of salt, to yeah. understand that every day we're all individually teaching. Yeah. You know, we're all individually teaching. We're, we're, we're all pushing this fucking thing yeah. either in the right direction or the wrong direction. Right. And most of the people who are pushing this shit in the wrong direction, it's only because they've been taught. The only thing they've been taught is how to push it in the wrong direction. And also misery loves company, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to see someone get their up, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, for, for the most part, the only people that do are the people that will, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like you and I, like yeah. I want you to be like, boom! I want you to yeah, be yeah, here. Like, yeah. in no way do I ever think like, mm, no me. Like, I'm like, no. When the people I care about are doing better, I'm doing you better. Do better. Yeah, yeah. If I do better, I can help them do better, yeah. or vice versa. You know, all this stuff. You know, but yeah, dude. I mean, it is so complex and such a. a, a might, it might even be a complex weave of simplistic things. Yeah, yeah. that you just don't even know where to start. Mm-hmm. But um. Yeah, man. I, I I I don't know. It's 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 super crazy. Well, let's keep. I'm just gonna go through some shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You know one thing. What did, when, what did you have? What did you have? Oh, I was gonna say it's weird. Facebook keeps doing like new friend suggestions. Do you get that shit? All the time, dude. They're all like, like these girls. <laughs> I'm like my pro, my, pro, my my profile says I'm married. Uh-huh. Not one dude has ever been suggested to me. That's weird. It's all these like. Really? Like these attractive women, Steve. They know you're a player. Nah, shit. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> do not give me these suggestions, man. Not that it's anything for me, but I don't need that. You know like, what's funny? They weird mi- thing. They might be sending you that shit merely because it says you're married. That's and, weird. And like, we gonna get this motherfucker. Let's, let's, let's start a little <laughs> we drama we gonna, we on gonna this catch dude. His ass up. I'm like, no, you don't know me. I'm strong, man. You can't, you can't mess with me like so that. So one of the first things I, I just, oh we're yeah, just gonna yeah, start, yeah, we're just gonna start throwing some shit. I was just spitballing, but um, yeah. So John Witherspoon died, man. Oh, Pops. yeah, I was going to say. So give a little slow clap for John. Oh, Lewis, yeah, so. let, me, let, me, let me slow clap for that guy. So here's a prime example of a, uh, a suggestion that fucking oh, wow. people give me. Look at Veronica Vasquez with the titties hanging out. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm like, why? Why are you doing that to me? <laughs> Leave me alone, Veronica. <laughs> you know? But yeah, do past. That's, that's, that's crazy. I mean, he'd been, he was, I he was I mean, older. Come on, he man. Was older. He, I mean, he's like at least 78. Probably 170. But <laughs> man, I wanted to, yeah, I was hoping you squeeze out one more Friday, but fucking Ice Cube, that dude took way too long to get that shit going. Oh, shit. I just thought about that. Yeah, he's, he can't even be in the fucking Friday dude now. Dude was trying to be all busy playing uh, playing cops and shit, and now, like... Hopefully he has some, like, old-ass Tupac-esque footage yeah, of okay, him playing and pops. CGI, and he, CGI, he CGI pops. puts that dude in, like, you're like... It's like a Snapchat That's filter cool. fucking how fucks did, up sometimes. How did you get this? Oh, we shot this at, during the original Friday. It's just outtakes. It's just fucking... It, it's just pops in the bathroom all the time. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah, we, we shot... <laughs> we shot like 40 minutes of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. Slow clap for that, that gentleman there. Yeah, yeah right. Okay, 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 okay. Fucking comedy legend, at least. I mean, he was... Def you know, Comedy he knew Jam. a lot of people. He knew a lot, a lot of fucking people, man. Yeah. Um, I was just looking at some, like, Twitter photos of him, because they just had his memorial service. Yeah. And, dude, it was fucking a who's who of Black Hollywood. Oh, man. Everybody was there. Yeah. You know? So, um, you have anything else? Three-year-old high school teacher accused of having... I mean... Three-year-old well, them. I'm sorry. I think of graduating funny, young. Three, 63-year-old high school teacher accused of having sex with students. Ew. Wait, why were chicks letting them hit? <laughs> dude, old as shit. This is um a, smooth ass lady. dude. Dang, it's a lady. Well, this is a little less because like you got horny fourteen year olds. Oh, having sex. Sixty three, and she white. That's like a she a white. Yeah. 63. Have you ever heard of That's a old sixty three? Have you ever heard of a a, a, a black female teacher having sex with uh, students? Does that happen? Nah, but that probably happens all the time. They just don't report it. Everyone's like on the up, and everyone's got like their 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 shit figured there's, out. There's definitely some like thick ass teacher from Atlanta getting smashed out by some young like football playing nigga in high school. Probably yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, a lot. I'm pretty sure a lot. You know what's crazy is that like you don't realize it to become to become an adult, but mm-hmm. your teachers are like 22, 23 years yeah. old. They're yeah, fucking shit. dude. But I didn't have. Talking about that, I didn't have... 20, 22, educated, 
and probably like have no like male suitors that are like at their level of education at that point, and then they see a fucking like diesel ass like black track runner. Yeah. Sometimes it ain't even that. Sometimes they're fourteen. He, he, gonna, he gonna drop dick. <laughs> he gonna drop dick. What about what about that uh, the, the hot ass teacher that um, was getting smashed out by a fourteen year old? Which I can't imagine was a a, that was a, old, a night to uh, fucking like in the remember. 90s, right or some shit. No, this happened recently, I oh, guess. Mm-hmm. So, like, dude, like, cute lady. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any hot teachers. I had zero. Yeah, me. I zero don't hot teachers. Any. And the one that was, like, semi-cute, she was the closest one. But, like, I still wasn't, like, I could have yeah, sex yeah. with any of these uh, hot-ass high school girls when I was in high school. <laughs> like, well, I had to go for a teacher. It's like, mm. That has to be an amazing feeling. Well, it's got to be To come back to school the next day and be like, I fucked. I fucked my teacher, dog. That's like, I smashed my teacher out. <laughs> Very interesting. She'd be like, you get an F. I'm like, bitch. You know, yes. okay, I mean, no, better be, man. Better come be on. F for fuck. Come on. <laughs> that F better be for fuck. I'll, I'll do that. I'll, shit do, out I'll, of do, you that. I'll do the thing you like. If you fucking <laughs> take it to a B at least. <laughs> like, suck my dick. She's like, I am. Like, That's right. And you change that grade at the same time. <laughs> Oh man. Anyways, okay, okay. Eat you out while you grade these papers. <laughs> Why are these? That's these gross though. Sixty three year old white woman and you sweet, like murdering her dude. Cuckold style. Yeah. <laughs> That's gross, dude. Okay, wait. I've seen some hot older women, right? Like I've, I, how how's Holly Berry? She's like in her fifties, right? Yeah, Holly Berry crazy though. Everybody know that. Yeah, but a lot of the hot but like, I, I mean, she's not crazy enough to not smash, though, right? Oh, right. Yeah, I would, exactly. she, if she was like, you're not going to take this? I'd be like, if I was a single man, I'd be like, yes. <laughs> How crazy would Holly Berry have to be before you'd be like, you know what? I think I'm going to pass on this. Start smashing her head on the corner of a desk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think I'm done. So it would, it would have to take that level of crazy. Yeah. 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 What cool. if she just like, like she like turned her head up, spit in the air and just let it like. Fall on her face. I, 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 I like. I, I let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's fine. And then she's like, looks at you like. <laughs> I just, I just probably take my time down from thirty to fifteen like, minutes. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let it. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll let it go. It's a little sexy. I'll Still let it go. <laughs> but this sixteen year old lady is gross. She's not, she's, she's, <laughs> not, she's not attractive at all. Uh, yeah, or you know what? If Holly Berry is like just takes a shit while I'm, you know, uh, then that's that's a no deal for me. I, I can't. The, I don't even like to think women like use the bathroom. Man, wait like till that. you <laughs> get in a relationship where you live. I've seen it. I think I've seen it. it oh yeah, gro- oh yeah, you're right. You it is the grossest thing for me. <laughs> it's the fu- I don't know why. I don't know why it's the but like. Bar none, the grossest fucking shit ever. It if is I've ever what seen a woman like sit on a toilet and take a shit. Oh, that's it's the most. I'm like, look, the last thing I want to do is have sex with you right now. Yeah, <laughs> my, my, I'll tell you right now, like, my wife would, one, never allow that to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she would never be like, don't, she'd be like, eh, don't go in that bathroom. You know what I mean? She at least, it's, that's all she can do mm-hmm. if I'm trying to walk in. She can't pretend anything. Yeah. And then she would never, like, let me just walk in while she's taking a shit. You know what I mean? That's just not going to happen. She ain't, she's not that comfortable. She's still very ladylike, you know, in that way. But um, I had a chick who would, like, joke, and then she would, like, fart. And it was, like, an instant, like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, to wean her down. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Like, she's like, what? It's natural. I was like, dude, yeah, but you like gross. <laughs> you, you, like, put something on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I can do that. Double standards here. Down there, just shit her pants. You're like, yeah, that's not sexy at all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've done shit where it's like, you know, what? something about that just ain't sexy at all. Like my lady boner is like, not there anymore. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, I took it there, huh? So we talked about the Popeye shit. We oh, right, right. Talked at length about that. Yeah. Dude, this, I don't know. This is su- such a specific person to try to emulate, but it's. Um, Teacher placed on leave after wearing blackface and dressing up like Common. Okay. Dude, <laughs> dude, it was like a teacher in Arkansas. And he, <gasps> and he came to school dressed like Common. I was like, of all the people, That's so of funny. all the black people, you could decide that you're going to dress up in blackface and emulate. 
Who, like, how did he land on Common? Did he have, like, a fucking, like, racism fucking Wheel of Fortune wheel? Like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Common today. I All just, right. I don't understand it. Like, <laughs> I don't understand it, you know, at all. Like, dude, this nigga had a turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> I was Damn. like, what the fuck? How did, how did you land on this specific rapper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope they did a side by side. Common and then this dude. It is great, dude. They, they fired the dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fuck did he think? Maybe he was trying to get fired. The fuck, well, of course. Oh my God, that's great, dude. <laughs> I wonder, did, like, did they know right away, like, oh, he's common? Or, or did he have to, <laughs> yeah, like, he just, <laughs> or did he have to say, like, oh, you, do you guys know who I am? That's even worse. He right? asked all the black right. students, hey, you guys recognize who I am? <laughs> um, I don't know. Oh, my God. Like, I see this just as, like, common. <laughs> and common. All right, here it is. Wait. No? Wait. Teacher's dresses. Wait, what the fuck? School teacher uses blackface to dress up as rapper Common. Is it? Is it? Dude, you can't even see his face. Is <laughs> Dude is staying in the shadows and is black as shit. Like, what did he use? Like, real black black paint? <laughs> real black. Oh, wait, here we go. This is just. So, one of our white teachers at MHS yesterday decided to paint his face so to look like Common the Dude, rapper. Dude, you can't see him at all. Like, he's Common's light skin. Like, how the fuck? He's rapping. <laughs> he's rapping. He's too common song. Dude, this nigga, he's as dark as he possibly could be. You can do it with AI. The future will blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did. He wore a white turtleneck, too. You know those stains aren't coming out. <laughs> really hot in oh, here. Oh my god. And the black it was black uh, student she posted it. Dude, so Common's hot. light light as fuck. Like why did he go so dark? That <laughs> that dude went crazy. He didn't, he didn't get he didn't get like no fucking jersey short bronzer. Like that that would make more sense, right? Just get a little yeah, bronze. Yeah, yeah, like, no this nice dude just tank. did shoe polish. <laughs> <laughs> went crazy. Hey, who do I look like? Common, right? Hey, yeah, like, you guys, the turtleneck? The turtleneck didn't do it? And the bald head? Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, what made him go with the turtleneck? Common hasn't wear, worn the turtleneck in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh, that's great, man. I don't that's even, like I have awesome, no idea. <laughs> Teachers keep doing this to themselves. Politicians keep doing it to themselves. It's fucking weird. Oh, they can't help awesome. themselves. And I doubt if that man's even racist. I think he's just fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he recited the rhyme that Common did for the fucking Microsoft commercial. <laughs> 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 he didn't even do his popular songs. He was like, yeah, yeah. you know that Microsoft commercial? They'll totally know I'm Common once I recite that shit. Fuck out of here. That's just, who are you? I wanted to see that footage where someone's like, who are you? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's shit. fucking crazy. Okay, this is the last thing I got. Um, right. McDonald's CEO fired after having consensual relationship with employee. It's kind of weird. Who gives a fuck, right? The two adults, right? Yeah. It's not like a three-year-old that's working at McDonald's. Yeah. I don't fucking... Unless the consensual... Oh, what says... Well, it says consensual relationship with employee. Would they hire three-year-olds? You might fuck a three-year-old. Ooh, so maybe that's what happened. They start thinking, but look, if we start hiring three-year-olds... Listen, I... Damn, look the way she's flipping those fries. Just diaper all wedged in her ass. Yeah, and what was the CEO <laughs> doing in a McDonald's? No, I think he... See, it says... It, it's kind of misleading because that's where your mind goes. Your mind is like, oh, like, the fucking CEO of McDonald's, like... Went to like I eat at McDonald's. Like he went Weird. to like the Slauson and Western, and he was like, "Yeah, that, that one, that right Latina there. right there, she looking fire." I like it. I don't think that happened. It's probably somebody in the corporate office. Yeah, but I guess what it is is that McDonald's supposedly has a um, like no zero tolerance zero boss. tolerance dating fraternizing. Yeah, it's like anybody who you work with, you're barred from um, engaging in a relationship. With that them. must have been some like some. Fucking some prim, primo fucking vagina, dude. Dude, he lost it. He's a CEO. Like, he's not. Like, he's I'm going to throw this all away for some fucking oh, pussy. Of McDonald's. Dude, you can get pussy outside of McDonald's. If he's a CEO of McDonald's, I would assume he's getting pussy outside of McDonald's. <laughs> no, I know this is maybe weird to say, but I'm assuming that he was married. 
up most likely. Now I have to see what the dude looks like because I'm like, dude, you have to be a fucking toad. If yeah. You're not smashing puss and you're the CEO of McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe he thought he was going to pull him up on a Schwarzenegger. Can you even be that ugly? To You'd be, be the real CEO ugly. Of McDonald's and well, not. What about Weinstein? Let me see. His when, name when was um, ugly as shit. CEO of McDonald's, Steve Easterbrook. Hmm. And he's been the CEO since um, 2015. No, he's not a bad looking man. He's not even a bad looking dude. Uh-huh. Come on, man. Does he have a wedding ring on? He looks like some British. He looks like a British nigga. Yeah. But. <laughs> Like from, no. <laughs> he's like a, a young version of that dude. I like how. What, I mean, what, what did this employee look like? And then obviously, his hair show. looks fake as shit. For some reason, yeah, it's just he, an odd. He, lo- he looks like he should be bald. <laughs> yes, yes. He looks like uh, Jeff Bezos with hair. <laughs> dude, <laughs> is that him, dude? That, that dude put th- on some th- LBs. This is just another Stephen Easterbrook. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. Uh, okay, that's all I got, Steve. Well, mine's a little bit more dark. Okay. But, dude, shit is going down in Mexico. What's going on there? Man, uh, so some cartel, the Sinaloa cartel, they stormed um, a home in a Mormon like kind of like colony. Because uh-huh. there's, a, there's a big Mormon colony down there, I guess. Uh-huh. Fucking barged into this home and murked out a wife and two kids. Fucking killed like nine people. Holy shit, dude! And they're like, now they're thinking that it was a mistake. Uh-huh. Like, not they're like, ooh, these are the wrong people we killed. You think there's a chick he was fucking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hope so. I'm sorry. Is that Ronald McDonald, <laughs> dude? So, uh, yeah, so that happened, right? Um, and because. Uh, the whole thing with like El Chapo, uh-huh. that shit's getting squirrely, right? Uh-huh. And then so El Chapo, he's in Chicago, right? He's in jail. Yeah. Now they've been, they captured his son. Yeah. Right. I mean, but he was let go, wasn't he? They let him go uh-huh. after like they were threatened, uh-huh. you know, with a bunch of machine guns and killing their family. Yeah. Then I guess they caught up to the dude again, caught him again. The son. Yeah. Oh shit. Then they let him go again. <laughs> Right? And then... How many times are we going to do this? Yeah. And then um, the the agent, whatever, who tracked him down, mm-hmm. catch him a second time, killed his ass and killed... Uh, they killed the agent? Yeah. And then they killed his family. Ooh. Something like that. Let me let me double check this right. But they, they're like, dude, you thought we were playing around and now we killed your family. Nah, dudes, dudes ain't playing, bro. Yeah. And so now they're like, well, what the fuck do we do? You know what I mean? Like, what do you do? See... Do you do? El Chavo is Mexican, right? Yeah, yeah. Mexican niggas grimy as fuck, bro. Like those cartels. No, oh, dude, motherfuckers not playing, bro. Well, let me just let me give you a little some some statistical facts here. So check this out. So the killings in Mexico versus uh, versus civilian deaths in Afghanistan and Iraq since 2007. Uh-huh. Okay, so in Afghanistan, there's been a total of civilians, 21,415 civilians killed. Over what span of time? From 2007 to now. Okay. That's, that's still a that's, fucking ton. Right? That's Afghanistan, right? In Iraq, civilians, 81,636 oh. killed. Oh. Right? That's horrible, right? Oh. Now, you ready for Mexico? Yes. Mexico. No. 164,345 civilians have been killed, and there's not even a fucking war In going Mexico? on. Mexico? And they wonder why motherfuckers are, like, running across the border and shit? Yeah. I, I, I'd be fucking diving across the border. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Michael Phelps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's not even a war going on there, really. Not, yeah. not, not, not a legit one. Not a, yeah. That's fucking insane. Look at that. I'm that looking that at shit. the bar. Jesus Christ. That's crazy as fuck. 164,000 people. Have been murdered. In what? Um, seven, eight, nine. In 12 years? Yeah. 12 year span, 164,000 people. We're talking heads Cut off. Oh my god! And lined up, lined up along the streets to warn people, "Don't fuck that, around." That's fucking. That's atrocious, dude. Shit is crazy. I mean that, and I'm see. I'm saying like we, you know, we spoke primarily about like hood mentality. But yeah, that's just going on dude. everywhere. There's that mentality of not being able to fucking separate yourselves from what you like naturally want to do. The reactionary thing. So check this out. So. uh 
I witnessed uh, like a cartel like killing on video, right? Uh-huh. And it was one of the dudes at work, and they're always looking at grimy shit. And he's like, yeah. "Yo, Steve, check this out." So I was like, "Well, what is that, dude?" It was a guy that had his hands tied behind his back, uh-huh. right? And another guy was cutting his chest open with a big ass oh knife. Oh my god! And he was alive. And he was alive. Pulled his heart out and, and and showed it to him. Like literally, like in the fucking movie, showed uh-huh. it to him. And the dude was still alive for at least fifteen seconds. Oh my god! And then the dude went rubber. Right? He just dropped. Uh-huh. Like like lifeless uh-huh. and so they had it dude I was, I can never I was like why the fuck did you show you me should? that I can never get that out of my head now man like that's in there oh, I don't want to see that shit dude. and so uh, this guy I, I follow and he like talks about shit a uh-huh. lot of it a lot of their belief system goes back to um, uh, some, was it some morte oh, god damn it it's a uh, Jerusalem it's like their version of voodoo, right? Okay. Yeah, tr- <laughs> fucking Jerusalem. Uh, Santa Maria, right? Okay, okay. And uh, it's like a kind of like has uh, Car- Car- Afro-Caribbean roots, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's I know there's a like sacrifice, a yeah. lot of sacrificing. Yeah, so it's that, but also like it also <laughs> goes to the ideology of the old Aztec ways where they kill their uh, enemy. That's why he took the heart out. And, they, okay. and then they, and they eat the heart to take their powers, mm-hmm. right? So there's a lot of them. That's what this dude's saying. I don't know shit. I don't know anything. Do they also still believe in a sun god? Hmm, they might. <laughs> but all I know is these fucking dudes are scary as fuck. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I wouldn't want to fuck with them. Like, if you're going to sell, go ahead and sell your drugs. <laughs> I don't have anything to Could do with that shit. you imagine being in, like, a, an old, like, culture like that where everything that happens around you in the world, like, you don't understand it on a scientific level. Yeah. So you just figure that there's, like these beings that are orchestrating yeah. this shit. Like, it starts to rain. You're like, yeah. oh, they're mad at us. They're yeah. mad at us. Yeah, yeah, we got to kill somebody. Fucking, it gets really hot and shit. You're like, oh, the sun guy's trying to burn us today. Yeah, he's yeah. trying to burn us. We we probably need to sacrifice a few few thousand people. Yeah. He's mad at us. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. like, fuck, man. <laughs> that shit is crazy. Somebody has to die. Yeah. Another thing uh, people are all up in arms about is uh, fucking... Um, so I guess, uh, where's it at? Oh, here it is. Chinese airline executives punished amid photo outrage. So uh, there's a picture of, like, a, I'm assuming, for sure Asian, but a Chinese woman mm-hmm. that's sitting in the cockpit, in the pilot's seat. And oh, she's not supposed to do that? Bro, this is supposed to be locked so that we don't have another 9-11 situation I mean, happening. she's not catching cock in that cockpit, though, right? Nah, nah I don't think right. so. She's probably, maybe, I don't know. This picture was just taken. I don't know what happened after she the just, picture was taken. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the thing is, um, one thing I know about these commercial flights or these planes is that they essentially fly themselves. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I know just because my 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 dad's a pilot uh-huh. and my uncles and everyone they're pilots, you just have to be in there just in case shit goes squirrely, uh-huh. and you got to you know be able to land it. And I think he said that they can essentially kind of almost land themselves also, but you got to. You guide want to that get shit. as like far away from the twilight zone as possible. Yeah, exactly, dude. It's a gremlin on the fucking wing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so but so really, is there anything to worry about unless he's like smashing her and he puts her butt on all the controls and they fucking nosedive? I don't know. <laughs> nosedive. <laughs> you, you, can, you can hear over the intercom and shit. You're like, oh, oh hey, yeah. You're, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. She's got the captain hat on and shit. I said, your captain speaking, I'm going to come. Get, get this bitch off the controls. I'm going to come. <laughs> Dude, what about, um, I saw some footage of like, uh, something happened where the plane lost control, like altitude, like mm-hmm. for a second. Mm-hmm. And all this shit like just went flew, flew up. up in the air and the drink cart was, uh-huh. was right there and just drink spilled over everybody <laughs> and fucking like That's the airbags funny. came, or That's the breathing funny. bags came down and shit. It's a little funny. It's not, it's just the drink shooting over everybody. <laughs> <laughs> It's Some like Coca Cola for you, man. It adds insult to injury. Yeah. Like, you probably have a heart attack and you Yo. fucking splash with a mimosa. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that shit's scary though. Uh, I I remember when I was flying back from San Francisco, and it dropped like probably like twelve feet. It, I I don't know. I might fucking guess. I almost shit my pants, dude. That shit was scary as fuck. I was like, I never want to get on a plane ever again. Of course, it did, but like. You I don't want to ever get I've on a plane ever. I've never been like that, but I'm, I've had turbulence where yeah. it'll drop. I, it hasn't been eight feet, but it'll 
like where it was like, you're like oh, bro, you, shit. There's, yeah, there's that. <laughs> but like, I literally like lifted out of my seat, like like a floating. Status oh, see, I, it wasn't that, or something like it, that. Shit just dropped, and everyone screamed. Uh-huh. And all I could do is laugh because I I didn't know how to react. Mine was probably like five feet or something like that. Yeah. Like, I like, oh, you, fuck. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt those were scary. Yeah, this one was fucking like I don't ever want to fly again. Uh-huh. Uh, not as bad as those people's though, but like. All I could do is laugh. I didn't know what to do. And so this lady was really fucking pissed off at me that was sitting next to me because I was laughing. She thought I thought it was a joke. Not funny. Oh, yeah. She was crying. <laughs> but um, <laughs> anyways. Um, Have you ever had a, I had a flight where I was coming back from um, like St. Croix to L.A.? Uh-huh. And like we were navigating around a um, like a storm system or whatever. Oh. Uh, and you could see off in the distance. Lightning. Like just fucking mad lightning and rain. Like, yeah. But it wasn't happening at all where we were. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Dude, so fucking crazy. I think when we were flying to Thailand, uh-huh. I, um, it was cloudy. I think they said they had to drop below a certain level or go above the clouds. I uh-huh. think it was, I, I don't know if I can know because I don't know how it works. But our a plane had been struck like twice by lightning. But they're built for that, though. Ugh. They're built, I guess they're both for that. And I could be fucking lying and misunderstood what he said. But He's probably lying. There's a chance. <laughs> but uh, I was like, what? I was like, what the fuck, dude? Are you serious? But um, there's that time. I told you about the time where I was in the parking lot at work and lightning struck. Oh, yeah, you did tell me. Ooh, Don't you, didn't dude. you tell me that you, you have it on... Um like tape, right? Yeah, they sent it to me on um, like just it, the the way that where the camera's at. Mm-hmm. You just see the bright flash in the corner, so you don't see it. Direct. Dude, that was I was like, that's power. Like yeah. the, I've like, dude, it was really. I, I just fell. I just fell to the ground. It wasn't tactical in any way. I just like my knees gave out. And I just. Fell to the I ground. remember when I was younger having like a lightning strike like right in front of me. Yeah, like I was like walking. It was, like right in front of me. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> dude, it's scary as fuck. I think this thing hit the dumpsters that were like maybe like ten okay. feet away from me. But dude was so loud, I just like gave out. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, dude, was scary as fuck. Uh, Shit, we got like three minutes until nine. I was supposed to be out of here, but all fuck good. It. One little, fuck it. Yeah, we just live on the edge, Trey. Because I got something real important to share with you. You like little Nas X? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I don't. I'm not particularly into I, music. I didn't, I didn't think so. Either. But I, I don't, you know. I don't no, I, I'm, I'm just talking about, you know, entertainment right here. You Why, know, what, do you, what do you do now? Fashion. Did you come out of the closet again? <laughs> <laughs> nah, he, little Nas X knows how to make a suit feel fresh. That's what the, the title is. Okay. I was like, well, how? I'm interested. Add heels. This is where. That's great. Dude, it's fucking great. We got to end it on that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I'm not to mean like awesome. the shiny patent leather black heels, that all six great. inches high and shit. Add heels, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> all right, folks, we'll see you next week. <laughs> all right, you know what? Listen, thank you for listening to us, whoever's out there listening to us, if you are. Hey, let us know that you exist. Uh, shoot, shoot us an email. <laughs> email. Uh, we don't even, I, I don't, don't even remember the email. It's at Mystery, Mystery Ch- Children Podcast. Mystery Children Podcast at Google. gmail.com. Oh, okay. Dot net, I mean, who's really who's fucking whack enough to like email us? Hey guys! Oh my god, I have to use the bathroom. Okay, we're gonna end this right now. <laughs> All Stitcher, right, y'all. Stitcher, Podbean, Podbean iTunes, um, Apple, something or other. Thank you for listening, Mystery everybody. Mystery Children Podcast, Mystery Children Podcast, and we're gonna get P on soon, and we're gonna do that fucking official fifty for y'all. So stay tuned. All, All right, right, y'all. Peace. peace.